Hey there, this is Dwayne at RealFixesRealFast.com. Today I want to talk to you about a problem with the EVAP system. It stands for Evaporative Emissions. We're working on a 2012 Ford Explorer. It's got about 96,000 miles on it. The driver came in and said the check engine light came on. It seems to be driving fine. There's no other complaint of any kind. And we actually road tested it and confirmed that. Check engine light on, no other problem. Now when we scanned it, we had code P0456, which indicates that there is a EVAP small leak. Now the modern EVAP systems, the computer that monitors this, has the ability to detect whether or not the leak is a small, medium, or large. And in this case, it's a very small leak. Now the EVAP system's been around for a while and over time it's gotten more and more. In fact, the newest systems are called the enhanced EVAP system. And there's various methods and strategies as to how to find these leaks. But it's those tiny little leaks that can be very frustrating. In fact, in the latest issue of Motor Age Magazine 2015, Jerry Trulio wrote an article and the article was called Finding the Little Ones, about how to find the small EVAP leaks. Good article, Jerry. Appreciated reading it. And in this article, he really covers a lot of ground on there, how to find all kinds of things, but especially the little leaks. He talks about the different strategies we use and sometimes the different levels of diagnostics we have to go to. I encourage you all to read it. Thanks for writing it, Jerry. So there's all kinds of tools and techniques and strategies to find EVAP leaks, small ones. And they're necessary and we have to use them all. But I want to talk to you today about one that I call the critical thinking method. Or how to find a small EVAP leak without a smoke machine. So before I go any further, I'm going to explain how the EVAP system works, at least for this vehicle. Different manufacturers have different variations. Once we understand how it works, then we'll look at the critical thinking method of trying to find the EVAP leak. Gasoline is a hydrocarbon or a liquid carbon. But sooner or later that liquid carbon is going to turn into a vapor. It heats up, it cools down, it sloshes around in the gas tank. It's going to go from a liquid to a vapor at some point. Now those vaporized hydrocarbons can pollute the air if they escape to the air and we can no longer allow that. So we have the EVAP or the evaporative emission system to control these vapors. The basic elements are the fuel tank, the gas cap, the fuel tank pressure sensor, the charcoal canister, canister vent valve, all of the lines that connect everything and the canister purge valve. Now the EVAP system collects these vapors from the fuel tank and it stores them in the charcoal canister but they can't stay there forever so the EVAP system also allows them to be drawn back into the engine and then mixed with the fresh air and burnt off in the combustion chamber but in order for this to work the system has to be airtight or there's no leaks. Now when the engine off we have no vacuum so the normal engine off state is the canister purge valve is closed or it's not been turned on it's sealed and the canister vent valve is open or venting that's the normal state it has not been turned on now the vapor in the fuel tank can now be stored in the charcoal canister but we have to be able to get it out of there and we will use engine vacuum to do it so when the evap system wants to draw the vapors from the charcoal canister it's going to open or energize the canister purge valve. That's going to allow the vacuum in the engine then to travel. Now remember the canister vent valve was open and it's going to stay open and vapors can now travel from the charcoal canister all the way up to the engine. Now the EVAP system has a way of checking to make sure that it's working. It's the enhanced monitor and it's going to check for leaks. But remember, in order for this to work, it has to have no leaks. It has to be airtight. Now remember the system, there is vacuum applied. So when the system is going to check for leaks, both of the valves have to close. Once they're closed, the system is sealed. To do this, the canister purge valve will become de-energized or sealed. 
and the canister vent valve will be energized or it will seal. Now the monitor can run and it monitors the pressure in the fuel tank pressure sensor. So if the pressure drops, a code will be set. Now to find a small leak, you can use a smoke machine and sometimes we have to do that. But there is another method that I call the critical thinking method. Now remember, the monitor has applied vacuum and it has sealed it between the purge valve and the gas cap. So the entire system is now sealed. Both valves are closed. This purge valve and the canister vent valve. Now it's going to look for a leak somewhere between the first canister purge valve and the gas cap. If there's a leak anywhere in there, if the pressure bleeds down, it will set the code. Now there's only two moving parts in this system. The valves. Now the canister purge valve is a simple open or closed solenoid. It's fairly easy to access and it's usually under the hood. The canister vent valve is the same thing, a simple open or closed solenoid, but it's not so easy to access. It's usually under the vehicle and in some cases you have to move sh shrouds that protect it. Now, in the EVAP system, keep in mind that open or closed also means sealed or not sealed, or leaking or not leaking. Now remember, this vehicle has 96,000 miles on it. So how many times do you think that these valves have opened and closed? Thousands. Remember, the valves are responsible to seal the system so it can be airtight. And they have been opening and closing thousands of times by the time we get 96,000 miles on the vehicle. Now critical thinking tells me that the valves are the most likely to have failed. So why don't we check them first? Now that we understand how the system works, it's time to get our data. We're going to use a scanner and look at the computer's data. Most of this can be done right from the driver's seat. Let me show you what I'm going to look for. The first thing we're going to look at is the codes menu. Now you can see here there's 19 different possible modules or computers. But well, we're going to look at the engine codes because that's where our EVAP problem would be. I can see that we have stored in the memory code P0456 and explains that as an EVAP system leak, very small leak. Our computers are pretty smart and they can monitor this system and they can tell if the leak is big, little, or somewhere in between. Our code says it's a very small leak. So how does the PCM know that it's a small leak? Well to find this out let's go to our scanner again and let's look under generic functions and then we're going to go to our monitors which is mode 6. Now here we see the various sensors and monitors that the computer will do and what we want to look at is the EVAP monitors and if you'll notice there's three 0 0.09, 0 0.04, and 0 0.02 well, the large one is for a leak of 0 0.09, medium 0 0.04, and the small leak is 0 0.02. Now we can go deeper and we can actually look at the large leak, the 0 0.09. And if you notice down here, it says the result is that it passed. The medium leak is 0 0.04, and it passed. And then the small leak is 0 0.02, and it failed. So the computer has looked for a large and medium and a small. The large and medium passed, but the small leak failed. That's why we have this code. Now the codes menu tells me the code, but that's all. I, now I want to see more information, so I have to go out of the code menu and go back. And I've, now I'm going to go into the generic functions, because what I want to look at is what we call freeze frame. Now what do I mean by freeze frame? Well, remember the computer is actually running and controlling this car and it's up monitoring all the systems including the EVAP system. And remember it saw a very small leak? Well, what happens when it detects a problem? It sets the code and the freeze frame is all the data or a snapshot of all that data at the time that it saw the problem and set the code. So when we go in here, we can see what was going on when it happened. Now we've got a lot of information here and no one single thing is actually going to tell us what the problem is. 
what we need to do is use our critical thinking, think through the system, understanding how it works, and then see what's going on and come to a judgment. Now you can see here that we've got engine speed or our RPM around 1500. Now idle is about 700. So this engine is running above idle. But if we continue to look down on the right hand side we'll see that our engine coolant temperature sensor says it's about 170 degrees. Now that's not startup. This car's been running a while so the engine could actually build some heat. Our ambient air temperature is 60, 59 degrees, so it's not that cold out. As I scroll down my data list, I can see that the vehicle speed is zero miles per hour. So the engine's running about 1500 RPM, but we're not going anywhere. The engine's been running a while because it's building up heat, and the outside temperature is just a normal day. The distance since the codes were cleared is 81 miles. Now in this case the driver did bring this into our shop and it was at a time when we were very busy and I couldn't get to it right then so I did tell him look let me clear the codes tighten the gas cap and continue to drive it if the check engine light comes back on then we can look at it and see what's going on so it cleared the codes and he's driven at 81 miles and now the check engine light has come back on now you can also see that we've got the number of warm-ups He's driven this car three times, or he started the car, let it warm up to normal operating temperature three different times within 81 miles, and it's finally set this code. So you can see it doesn't reset that code immediately. Our fuel system says it's in open loop. Now open loop means that the system is actually being controlled by pre-programmed instructions, you might say, rather than actually controlling it by the data that's there. We want it to get into closed loop. Now it's open loop is when the code was set. So what does all this mean? What does open loop mean? Now remember, there are no other symptoms other than the check engine light. An engine will always start in open loop and when you start the vehicle, the RPM will rev up a little bit and then settle down. The vehicle's been driven three times and 81 miles since I cleared the codes the VAP monitor has identified a small leak. The freeze frame is telling me that the engine is warm, not moving, and the RPM's at 1500. So, within 81 miles, the vehicle has been driven, shut off, and restarted three times. After the second shutoff, the engine was restarted again before it had cooled off, and the code was set while in open loop. And that code is for a small EVAP leak.